but one of the biggest secret cause of all is go to school. And many people think I'm anti-school. That is not true. I'm anti-ignorance. So I'm very pro-education. I'm just not pro being stupid about money. I think that's true, that what you said is education is more important now than it's ever been. That's right. So the problem is that the schools focus just on two kinds of education. There's the academic, which is really important. Reading, Reading writing, writing arithmetic. arithmetic, you need to have it. That's basic. Um, and the second type of education they give is the professional kind of education. So if you want to be a lawyer or an accountant or a teacher, then you need to go to school and get those certifications. But the one kind of education that's lacking severely in the school system as it stands is financial education. Time out. An important part of financial education is having a financial statement, which is an income statement and a balance sheet. Now, when you go to your banker, your banker always asks you for your financial statement, not your report card, because your financial statement is your report card once you leave school. Your financial statement will tell you whether or not you're smart with money or not smart with money, because that financial statement is your report card of your financial intelligence. I put on my Facebook one day that we need to teach our children financial education, and I received a comment back from a teacher that said, who's going to pay for it? <laughs> we're, we're all going to pay for it if we don't start educating our children in, in school. This is a very hot subject, but our schools are training people to be employees, to work for the rich. The second thing I don't like about school is how dare they label a kid as smart or stupid at an early age. The reason I'm sensitive to that <laughs> is because I was labeled stupid right off the start. <laughs> you know? oh. And it wasn't that I was stupid. I was bored, and I was not interested, and it was none of the subjects I wanted, and nobody could tell me how I was going to use calculus. I kept asking my teacher, how am I going to use calculus? And they couldn't tell me. Are they training to be an employee, or are they training to be street smarts? See, my, my poor dad was school smart. My rich dad was street smarts, and I'd rather be street smart today. Well, there, there's a total lack of practical education is really what you're talking about. And I found that. I, I'm an accountant. I, I have a master's degree. And you're an A student, right? And I'm an A student. We'll okay. forgive you. So, <laughs> thank you. But when, when I went to school, the only financial education I got was specific to my profession. Okay, there was no general financial education. I could have gone all through, gotten a master's degree, got a PhD in my field without any specific financial education about how to handle myself once I got out of school. Right, and people say to me, well, I learned economics in school. Is economics financial education? Not really. You know, it's not about investing, it's not about the laws, it's not about taxes, it's not about history. Well, it's also Robert, as, you, as a lawyer, I see all sorts of people walk through the door. And some are highly educated, and some have no education at all, but like you said, they're street smart. And the first time I saw this type of client, I thought, wow, he's doing pretty well. He didn't go to college, but he's got all this real estate. And then there's a pattern to, that develops where you see a lot of people who never went to college, but are street smart and have done very well. I can just say, um, I was talking to a woman the other day, she's a high, just as you're saying, highly successful doctor. Very, very successful. Medical Ve doctor. Medical doctor, very smart in so many ways. But when we were talking, she finally looked at me and she said, oh my God, she goes, I have not a clue about my money. She's 45 years old, not a clue. And you think that because they're successful, they know something about money. But so many people don't because so many of us haven't had the, had the education. School puts us in a culture of dependence. We, we depend on three things. We depend on a corporation to take care of us, or we depend on government to take care of us. And the scary one, I think, is we depend on institutions, you know, our, the people we run our 401ks to take care of us. Stock market. And, and yeah, and we, we put ourselves, we, we rob ourselves of the independence to think, think freely as entrepreneurs or investors, and we just become dependent on those three entities. And it's brutal. And Mr. Maloney, you never, you never finished school, did you? Uh, no, no, I, I failed school, but more than that, school failed me. Uh, I was dyslexic, they didn't know what it was back then, but basically, I was just like you, uh, bored stiff. I got put in all the remedial classes, so I was in with the dumb kids, basically. They're, they weren't teaching me anything I wanted to learn or anything that I would ever use in my lifetime. And the reason I bring up Michael, he is the, I mean, most people agree, he's probably the smartest guy on this team. And the problem was, again, it was, uh, Nita says there's three kinds of education. There's academic, reading, writing, arithmetic. There's professional, become a doctor, a lawyer, in my case, a pilot. And number three is financial.
but Michael was put back because of academics, because you can't read, right? Right. So how did you learn how to read? Oh, well, Apple came out with uh, OS X uh, at the beginning of uh, the last decade. And uh, you can just select text and hit a button, and the computer reads to you. Most people don't know it's built into the operating system. But more, I developed a passion for global finance and economics, and monetary history, especially. And passion we, drives you. Now, now we can't shut them up anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't blame Apple for that. <laughs> school is a solo game. I didn't do well in school. I did very well in sports. And in sports, you learn to compete. You need to deal, deal with pressure, you teams, goals. And school is more so individually. I'm, I'm competing against everybody. And, and teamwork is cheating uh, in school. Some of us cheated better than others. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just say last, last thing about school and money, which is a sacred cow. One of the things that really upsets me about schools and money is this. In America, schools are based upon real estate tax. In other words, if you come from a rich neighborhood, the real estate tax pays for better schools. If you're from a poor neighborhood, you get less money. So when anytime somebody tells me schooling is about being fair, that is, when I look at the numbers side of it, is if you're poor, you're getting the worst possible education. And to me, that is cruelty. So how does a person learn about money? How does a person increase their financial intelligence? This diagram called the Cone of Learning provides some interesting clues. The Cone of Learning was created by an educational researcher named Mr. Dale in 1969. And what he found is that the worst way to learn is by reading or listening to lecture. And the best way to learn is at the top, which is simulations or games and then doing the real thing. The interesting thing is my poor dad, who was good at school, thought that reading and lecture was the best way to learn. My rich dad taught me to be a rich man at the top of a cone. He taught me using the game Monopoly. You know, four greenhouses, one red hotel. Four greenhouses, one red hotel. And then we went out and did the real thing. So one of the ways, if you want to learn without much risk, is by simulations, play games. The reason my wife and I created the cash flow game was so that you could play and play and learn physically, mentally, emotionally, but play, make a lot of mistakes with play money. So how many people in this room have made financial mistakes? <laughs> you know, the only thing we were ever taught was maybe how to balance a checkbook, how to yeah. have a savings account, those basics. Financial education is like learning another language. Yeah. You know, when you learn real estate, it's a different language than stocks. It's a different, different than entrepreneurship or commodities, or oil or gold. I say this all the time in Mexico. If you learn English, you can do business with the whole world. When you learn to speak the language of money, yeah. it opens up a whole new world. Yeah. And unfortunately, in our school systems, we don't teach the language of money. We teach people the language of becoming a doctor, a lawyer, or an employee.